Good morning. My name is Mike Zaremski, member here of the Charles Schwab Futures Team. I'd like to thank everybody for joining us today on Schwab Coaching. This is our February 29th edition of Spotlight on Futures. Now, this will be a special spotlight here as we're going to continue our series here of introducing our street smart clients over to the Thinkorswim platforms. And of course, I can't think of anybody better to do our presentation today here, but education coach and avid futures traders, James Boyd. James, good morning. Good morning to you. How are you doing, Mike? Doing well, doing well. It's a leap year day here. We're going to leap our clients from Street Smart over to Think or Swim here in just a moment here. But before we begin, let's go through some important information here. First, we want to note that any information provided here be for general information purposes only and not be considered individualized recommendations or personalized investment advice. Any of expressions of opinion uh, James or I make are subject to change without notice and reacting to shifting market conditions. We'll also pull up some charts today. We do want to note that Schwab does not recommend use of technical analysis as a sole means of investment research. And of course, we'll be discussing futures here today. We do want to note that futures trading involves substantial risk and may not be suitable for all investors. So if you're interested in opening an account to trade futures with us, we ask that you please read the risk disclosure statement for futures and options. And of course, we always welcome your questions here on Schwab Coach here we have ken rose today uh work in the chats there so if you have any questions uh during today's presentation just type those into the uh chat window there next to your viewer there on youtube there and either ken uh james or myself will answer your questions during today's presentation so uh without further ado uh let's begin here and uh bring up our street smarts i'm sorry <laughs> our thinker swim platform here and i'll turn it over to jb Hi. all right I just uh, fixed, I fixed a setting so I could be a part of the presentation with the video. So I felt uh, alone. I fixed a setting so yeah. I could be a part of the presentation alone. The video. It, it's great to be here with uh, with uh, Mike. We also have James Odell, Jody, Kevin, uh, Dean, Don, Gary, and many others. We welcome all of you. We're going to start by to the Schwab.com website. When we go to the Schwab.com website, what you're now going to notice is we're going to go to where it says trade and what you're going to notice is right when we go to where it says trade it's now going to say uh thinkorswim desktop okay or thinkorswim web okay so we now have two different ways in which we can learn now back in 2005 i saw maybe 2004 i saw for the very first time um uh, the thinkorswim desktop and it blew my mind away how much better it was than what I was using at that time. Now, that wasn't my first impression because I was like, wow, is, there's so many features, there's so much. And I think we always feel like that when we learn anything, okay? So the biggest thing is we want to kind of break down how do we actually learn this as fast as possible so we can just get back to trading, okay? We don't want that to be a takeaway from doing the trading. Now, the biggest thing what we're going to do is before we go into, let's say, the desktop or the web, Let's go right here to where it says trading platforms. If I click on trading platforms, it's really going to show us what are the options that we can choose from. So when I go to the trade and we go to trading platforms, what you're now going to notice is if I scroll down here, you're now going to see what are the options that you have. Now, remember I kind of said variability? I'm not planning on this app. Now, remember I kind of said variability? I'm not being in my computer chair at the house. I'm not planning to. Okay, and I don't think you are either. It's called the Thinkorswim Desktop. That is the software-based version. I would like to call this the intermediate to advanced version. This was a, a platform built by traders. This is a software-based version. I would like to call it, this was a, a This really is going to look like that, okay? And you've seen this before. It's won many, 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 many awards. It's amazing, okay? Now, if we went to the Thinkorswim Web, the web does not require a download. The Thinkorswim desktop is a software. You download it to your computer. The Thinkorswim web, you could be in Minnesota. You could be in Rome, Italy. You could be in Madrid, Spain. It doesn't matter. It's a website, okay? And you're, we're going to pull that up, and we're going to focus on that. And then if you said, well, I don't really have a computer. I have, let's say, a Samsung phone, an Apple phone, et cetera. You could use the Thinkorswim mobile app. Now, right on this page, Okay, how do I get the desktop? Download it. How do I actually get the Thinkorswim web? Open it up. 
How do I, if I have an Apple phone, click there. If I have an Android phone, click there. So whatever you want to use, just click on it, okay? Now, before we actually hop into that, you're now going to see that right at the very tippy top, I, if I click on, let's say, Thinkorswim platforms, I'm now going to go to where it says overview. Actually, just for a sec, let's go over here to where it says compare platforms. If you're saying in making a decision to use the desktop or the web, what are some different features? Here we actually give you a table of different features that we actually have, whether you're going to use the desktop or the web. No one knows you have you better. So if you said, I'm trying to decide between using the desktop version or the web, look at the different features, okay? And if we look at, let's say, um, who, is the be who is the desktop suited for? Someone who's trying to uh, specialize in their trading, okay? Someone who, for example, says, I like using w like a website. Well, th that would be the thing which we're gonna focus on. If we actually went down a little bit, you're gonna see that if I use the web, we're gonna focus on. If we went down a little bit, you're gonna see that if I use the Bearing with us there, we had a little technical difficulties, but I think we've got that resolved, so I'm gonna turn it back to JB. All right, thank you so much for your patience. We're right back. And, and thanks for letting us know about the audio. Now, what we were mentioning was when we look at the desktop or the web, right? Both trade stocks or ETFs, both trade options, both use complex, both can use complex options. Both use futures and forex. Okay, so let's kind of spend some time here talking about that Thinkorswim web. I like to think about the Thinkorswim web as really a beginner to intermediate step to using the desktop. But everything that we learn on the Thinkorswim web, we can use in the desktop. Okay, so let's do this. So how do you get to the Thinkorswim web? Well, let's go back up to the top, and what you're going to notice is if I go to let's say the Thinkers uh, the Thinkorswim platforms. Let's just go to where it says overview. Okay. And if you want to get a little bit more information about that, we can uh, see that. One way we could just launch it is Thinkorswim desktop. We could download Thinkorswim. That's if you wanted the desktop version. Or if you said, right now, I want to use the Thinkorswim web. Well, launch Thinkorswim web. Now, what is, should this do? When I click on launch Thinkorswim web, it's going to bring up a different tab on my browser, as it does. Now, and that's why they call it web. It's a web-based platform. Now, what you're going to notice is when it loads, you're going to see that the information, okay, the layout, you're going to see that we're on a website, and you're going to see in the very top left, Thinkorswim web, we're connected, real-time data, all right? Now, at the very top, right there, right? Type in the symbol that you want. Now, what you're going to notice is also on the left-hand side, it's going to say live trading or paper money. So if you said, well, if I've never used this before, I would like to practice doing paper money. Well, I couldn't, I couldn't agree with you more. Let's go over here to where it says paper money, okay? Now, when I click on paper money, you're going to see that it's also going to show us these are simulated values. It's not real. Okay, live trading, paper money. We are highlighted to paper money. Now, the first thing what you're gonna notice is we can see the account value there. We can see how much cash we have right in front of us. And on the left-hand side, we also see a watch list. Okay, so this is what we call the left sidebar. We get a lot of work out of this, okay, as we'll see in just a sec. Now. I want to, for example, also spend a little time by looking at these four buttons on the left, positions. Now, the biggest thing is when they built this, they wanted to make it intuitive. So if someone said, where are my positions? We just thought we're going to call the button positions. Okay, so it's, there you go. And the positions is going to really track your, your orders, and it's going to track your current open positions. Okay. So when we look at positions itself, it's going to track your orders and what positions you have. When we go to the trade tab, if someone said, how do I do a trade? We just said, hey, let's just call it trade tab. And what you're going to notice is it pulls up on the right hand side a product that we could choose from by typing in find a symbol. If someone said, I want to use the charts, where do I find them? Click on the charts and you'll see that we have a chart box come up. 
And then if you said, well, how do I run a search or another way to say search is scan? Well, if I clicked on scans, this will not be for our purpose here today. But if someone said, hey, I'm doing stocks or I'm doing options, et cetera, what you're going to notice is this is really a way to run a scan on stocks or options, whatever you want. OK, so the, for our purpose here today, we're going to focus on positions, trade and charts. OK, now what I'm going to do is before we go even there, I want to kind of just spend just a quick moment on a watch list. On this left hand side, what you're going to notice is if we wanted to make a new watch list, all we need to really do in this in this case is just click on where it says new watch list. Now, if I click on where it says new watch list, okay, what it does is says, what do you want to call it? We're going to call it watch list, uh, let's say 229 for today's date. And if I do that, I'm going to say save. And what it really does is it just brings up the watch list to 29. Now, I don't have anything in there. How do I add something to that list? Well, right here, you're going to see where it says plus symbol. Well, let's click on that plus symbol. And what are we going to want to call it? Now, if I typed in, let's say ES, that's the S&P futures. And I just press enter. Okay. And now what you're going to see is there's the S&P futures. If I said, well, I want to bring up, let's say Apple. Okay. It doesn't have to be futures. If I want to bring up, let's say, crude oil, okay, there it is. If I wanted to bring up, let's say, uh, NASDAQ futures, I like NASDAQ futures, the investor says, and I want to bring up NVIDIA. So the list could be futures, it could be a different type, a group of products all summed up in one ticker. It could be, you know, uh, tech stocks, whatever. It could be even a dividend. It doesn't matter. We could put them all on the list. Now, what tech stocks, whatever, it could be even a dividend. It also notice it with this is if you said I want certain information at the top of the columns that's pretty simple just click on the gear and you can change the column headings to what you like okay now what we're going to do is we're going to spend some time on this positions page but let's first off go also to uh the left hand side let's go to trade okay so if I were going to trade a future which future would you want to look at to evaluate how to do a trade Mike, any any takes any takes on that? Which ticker would you consider? Um, I think I would want to see something like let's say the uh, Nasdaq 100. Okay, so let's do this. We're going to type in forward slash NQ. So just to load up a trade, type in forward slash NQ, and what you're now going to notice is you're going to see that it now loads the Nasdaq. Okay. This is the index future, and you're gonna see the quote detail, like volume, VWAP if you use that, et cetera. And we're also gonna see what is the margin requirement, the expiration, days to expiration, all right in front of you. What's also very nice about this page is it's also gonna show us when it when this moves, what how much does it move by, known as the tick? It moves in a quarter point increment. And for every quarter point, what is the gain or loss for every tick? And it's $5, okay? Now, if you said, well, can I see the futures or other ones? Sure. It's now going to show us different futures. We are looking at the March future. But as futures traders, hence why it's called futures, there's different expirations in which you can evaluate and you can find those by just simply expanding that and seeing other ones, okay? Now, if you were, let's say, I like to use options on futures, you could actually click on the options chain and see those options down below. Now, let's example give and say, I want to expand this page. I want to make this bigger. Well, notice you're going to see this little double arrow to the left. Let's click on that double arrow to the left. And what it does, it's going to maximize this page so we can see it full in its glory. Now, what I'm going to do is over to the right-hand side, we got sell and we got where it says buy. Okay. If we wanted to buy it, all we're going to do is just click on the green buy button. If I click on the green buy button down below, it comes up and it says buy one contract, 18,045-ish and we're buying one contract. Now, 
if we didn't want to do one contract, we could take out one and just type in three. That's all we got to do. Just take out one, put in whatever number you want. This tells us we have March. This is the March 15 expiration with 15 days remaining. And if the investor wanted to do this, all they would need to come down and do is just go to review. Okay. And you're going to see if I said, let's review this. Is this what we want to do? What is the cost? Which account are we doing this in? And is it paper money? And guess what it says? Paper money. Okay. This is what we want to do. Let's send it. Okay. Now, what you're now going to see is in this case, we now actually can get that filled. Now, I'm going to go ahead and bring this up for just a second. Okay. And if I did that, what you're now going to see is choose a different account. That account that I'm using has been fully used. And so let me actually grab a different account. Yeah, this will, let's, let's go back to that trade. I'm going to use that margin account. And if I bring up, bring up that order again, you're going to see it should fill fine. The other account, oh man, I got both accounts, for example. You are just over trading there, JB. I, I, you know, I know none of you have ever had this issue. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see okay there it goes so i'm using the smaller version of the nasdaq the mnq and if that trade fills what you're going to notice is down below it's going to state the position plus one contract the mark is where it is now mark change how much we're up or down since yesterday in uh when it opened again profit loss for the day or open now, if we wanted different headings again here, you like information laid out a certain way, simple. Just go to the settings gear right there, settings, okay? And you could change, you could take away or add different things that you wanted to see, okay? Simple as that. So we're gonna leave it kind of where it is, but what we're gonna do in this case is we're just now gonna go back and kind of look at one more. So let's imagine someone said, you know, James, I want to buy something and set a stop, okay? So now what you're going to notice is I'm going to bring up the Dow, okay? And if I did this on the Dow, you're going to also notice where we go to where it says buy, okay? And it creates a buy order. Now, if we said, how do I set up a stop at the same time? Well, just click on uh, contingent order. If I click on where it says contingent order, what it does is it just flips the order the first order is to buy. How do we get out? We'll just click on contingent order, and it's going to now flip the order to sell. Stock trade, we're going to change limit to a stop, and I'm going to type in the number of, let's say, 38,500, just example given, okay? So now I got a question here uh, that we're going to hit in just a moment, but let me just kind of bring this up. When I click on review, it's going to bring up in green that we're buying, in red that we're selling. Per contract is 225 to get in, 225 to get out, and we could see the buying power effect. That's the amount of money set aside to initially get into the position. If that's what we want to do, we're going to send the position. If that trade fills, we should see it pull up right there. And now what you're going to see is we can see the position there. But what is this position? This position is showing us where the stop is, okay? So we showed an entry to get in. We showed an entry plus a stop. Now there was a, a different question, but let's answer it, okay? Being, thank you for being patient. Let's say someone said, James, is there a way to kind of still look at CNBC or the Schwab network on these platforms? Well, you'll notice down to the very bottom left-hand side, you'll see that it will say Schwab Network, kind of a little icon down there. If I click on that right there, it's going to hyperlink and it's going to open up the Schwab Network, which many of you know, okay? So we can actually see this information right here. Now, if you had a second screen, and heaven forbid if you did, okay? It's not illegal, you can, okay? We can grab this little window and slide it over to a different screen. Why? Well. That way we could actually like look at our trades and then watch the market at the same time. Could you imagine? It'd be unbelievable, okay? 
So a quick win there. Now, but the question was, okay, so we have the swab network. Do we have CNBC? We have CNBC. If you go to the desktop version, what you're going to notice is we can, this is the desktop version. And what you're going to notice is we can change on the left-hand side, similar to what we saw on web, we can change the gadget. And if I click on the three lines and say switch gadget, okay, and what I'm going to do is one of the gadgets we can choose from is Trader TV, okay? Now, how do we get that again? Show me how you did that. We go to the desktop version, which you can download for free, click on the three lines, switch gadget, okay, Trader TV. Now, when we pull this up, Schwab Network, just like what we actually saw before. But if you said, well, I'm just kind of, I want to look at something on CNBC real quick, I can click on that right there. Which CNBC do you want? We have, for example, CNBC US, Europe, Asia, and Futures Now. So, for example, if I just, let's say, example given, uh, click on Schwab Network, this has like a, just a small video, and we can see this. If I want to pop this out, for example, and slide it over to, let's say, a second screen, et cetera, we can do that. Click on the little pop out there, and we could just slide over. Okay. Now, a lot of people do that, especially if you're trading futures, you're really watching the news information as you're maybe looking at the chart. So the question makes sense. So if you are a desktop user, that's how you do it. But on the web-based version, as far as I know, we have the Schwab network. Now, does that, um, was that helpful? Okay. Now, what I want to do is I want to kind of bring up something else. I want to kind of go just real quick to uh, just a quick reminder. So if, I, if we brought up the Dow futures as a, as a trader, you do want to know three main pieces of information. Number one, if I buy or sell a contract, what is the margin requirement? It's right in, right in front of us. The second thing we really want to know is what is the incremental movement known as the tick? And we know the Dow moves in a one-point increment. Now, you hope it moves in one point. It doesn't move a lot faster than that. Now, the gain per tick on this contract, okay, given one contract is 50 cents for every one point. So, I mean, if you're trading futures and you don't know what's the margin requirement, what's the tick, think of that as the incremental movement, and then what is the gain or loss per tick, that you want to know that, okay? Now, I want to now work our way just real quick to charts. Now, for just a moment, what you're going to notice is if I go to charts, you're now going to see on the charts, and again, this is going to be something we're going to use a ton. When we look at the charts, you're going to see these big red sell button and the buy button, just like we saw before on the trade tab, okay? You're also going to see at the very top of the chart studies, drawings, okay? So we'll go there in just a sec. But we also see the duration of the chart. And I'm going to click on that little clock there, and we're going to just change it to, let's say, day, okay? So in other words, when we take a look at this, this is just looking at the last one day. Now, I'm going to click on that again and say, can we just, let's say, example given, look at a one-year graph, okay? And this is standard of what you would see with the stock, et cetera. Show me a one-year graph of X, Y, Z, okay? And what you're going to notice is just to the right, it's going to show us, and I'm going to maximize this so we can see that I'm zooming in. Every candle represents one day on the chart. Okay, I want to zoom in so you can see that. Now, let me kind of zoom back out because you're going to notice something. Okay, over here on the right hand side, we actually see that it says minus one, 38,500. Where's that coming from? Well, that's coming from the order that we did. Or, now the nice thing about this is if we said for any reason, I want to cancel that order, okay. We can just click on the X, you see where that X is. And if I click on the X, it's just gonna cancel the order. We're buying and selling right off the chart. Guys and gals, when I saw this at Think or Swim, I was like, this is mind blowing, that you can buy and sell right off of the chart, okay? And what you're now gonna notice is, if I bring up this order again, click on, let's say, let me choose a different ticker, and ES, the micro S&P 
uh, there. We're now going to click on where it says buy. Okay. Here's the buy order. Now, how do I create a target and a stop? But when I click on the green buy button, I'm going to go down and click on contingent order once, and it creates a sell line. I'm going to click on the contingent order again, and you're going to see that it creates two cells. And the two cells is really the idea that the first cell is going to be where you think it's going to go to. Okay. So if we were at 5,100, if someone said, look, I want to sell it if we go to 5,200, fine. Let's go to data GTC for that, okay? And the stop is exactly like what we saw before. Let's say if we said, look, if it goes down to 50,50, I'm going to say stop, okay? Data GTC, okay? So we went through three orders. How do you buy something? How do you buy something with a stop? How do you buy something with a target and a stop? We did all three variations. Now, if I put this in and say, let's review this now, let's say, is this what we want to do? Okay. And you're now going to, it will show us what account do you want to do it? Okay. You can look at the information down below. If this is what we want to do, we can just say send. Now, if that order fills, which it has, oh, there it is. It's been submitted, but I haven't seen a fill yet. Okay, if that order fills, it's going to pop up a little window and we can see right on the price, it says plus one, right on the chart, plus one. It has not filled yet. We're at 5,200. Okay, now when we actually take a look at this, what I also want to do is when that fills, I want to, if someone said, where could I find a list of the orders that were filled today? But where would we find that? Well, we're going to go back to where it says positions. If I click on where it says positions, the positions is going to track our positions and our orders. We classify orders as, are they working still, meaning not filled? Second, have they filled? Or did you cancel them? So if I said, well, I want to know which ones are filled. We're going to go to positions and click right on filled. And we can now see which orders fill, okay, right here in chronological order. Okay, now, any questions? Yeah, we got a couple here, JB, uh, from yeah, a couple ahead. different of our viewers here. And it's all tied to, if they set up their settings for the watch list or the chats on the desktop or vice versa, will they carry over to the other platform? So the question was, if if we use if we have for example okay now by the way that order on the mes filled and we could see that order filled right there so the question is if i set up charts on the web-based version will it translate to the to the desktop version mike is that what you're asking correct okay i'm going to say initially that if i so if i go into the charts so let's kind of do something okay let's test that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the charts. And what I want to do is I want to imagine that some of you have specific studies that you like for you. Okay. So I'm going to do something kind of basic here. I'm going to go to where it says studies. And what I'm going to do is we can see that we have the upper studies on the price graph, price, volume, moving average. Let's say I take moving average off. Well, let's Let's not do, let's kind of keep that. Let's kind of say we change this to, let's say, a different moving average, like a seven day moving average. Okay. And you'll see why in just a sec. Okay. Uh, but I want to go back to the studies and I just want to strip this down to, let's say, MACD, take it off, volume, take it off. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is when I come over here to the right hand side and now click on settings, is there a way that I can save that? Okay. Now, as far as I know, I'm not, I have not seen a way or can remember a way, at least right now, to save that. So that's how we can actually edit the studies, okay? But I have not seen a way, at least what I can remember, of how to save that to, to go over to the desktop version. So, Mike, my, my initial answer to this would be no, but I can do some checking in that to make sure. Now. One of the questions, Mike, as we go to the next question is, when I put an order in, like we just got in the MES, 
If I bring up the MES on the desktop, okay, will it show me, for example, that order there as well? And sir, yes, it will. So it's gonna show us on the chart itself, the stop and the limit, but the order was initiated on the web-based version, okay? So the orders will, will duplicate, yes, the watch list will duplicate, yes, but I'd have to actually look into that and, and uh, double check if you could actually save the chart and have that duplicated to the desktop. So hold me to that. Let me do some uh, checking on that. Uh, probably can, but I'm going to have to look into that. Let's go to the next question. Sure. Uh, there's another question related to charts here. Can we see multiple charts at the same time? Okay. So good question. Now, what you're going to notice is right here where it says grid. Now I know, so I used Street Smart Edge back in 2004. Okay, and Street Smart Edge, we know there's like you could have two, three different charts. Well, the same thing goes here. If I click on where it says grid, this is just looking at one grid. Well, I wonder if I want two grids. Okay, well, fine, get taken. Okay, what you're now going to see is we could have MES over here, and we could have let's say. Bold, for example, right there. So that is just really two charts. Now, if I said, for example, can I uh, have different studies per each one and draw on each one? The answer is yes. But James, I was, for example, thinking I would like three charts. Well, what you're now going to notice is if I click on grid, <clears throat> okay, if I click on grid, you're now going to actually go down to where it says three charts. If I click on those three charts right now, uh, you're now going to see that the big chart is up at the top. And what you're gonna, now going to notice is the other two charts. We'll bring it up. Let's bring up crude oil right there. So now if I zoom out on my screen, what this is going to do is it's really going to show three charts at once. How, how do we get there? Well, let's go back to the beginning. If I click on grid one, okay, there's just one chart. Grid, I want two charts, okay? Grid, three charts, okay? Now, what is making the view look differently? I'm just kind of zooming in or zooming out on my screen so you can see that. And by the way, what's nice about this is it just, you know, you can customize it. And the, the other thing is uh, you could take this browser and slide it to a different desktop, et cetera, or break it outside if you're using more than one screen. Any other questions? Yeah, there's actually uh, another question here that we, we get a lot as well too. So I would say I set up all my watch list here on the desktop version there. Will those same watch lists show up there on my web platform? Okay, so let's just do this just real quick. If I go, for example, to the positions, uh, what we're gonna do is, where's the watch list again, okay? So if I go to where it says positions, and I, for example, let's say we have the left-hand side, we're now going to see that if I click on that, you're now going to, um, okay. So how, how do we make sure that this watch list, okay? So let's make this, so the watch list that we made, watch list uh, 229, I'm now going to go over to where it says new watch list. We're going to make one right up on the spot and check and see how fast it is. If I click on new watch list, if you don't mind, I'm going to use Les's name, okay? Les watch list, okay? Save. Now, if Les gave us his favorite stocks in which he tells no one, okay, we're going to add some stocks to that, okay? So if I do that, and let's kind of maximize this now so we can add those, let's add a symbol. If Les says his favorite stocks is NVIDIA, he likes to look at, let's say, the NASDAQ futures, okay? And we're just going to test on these two stocks, okay? So we got less watch list, NVIDIA, and there's the NASDAQ features. Let's go to the desktop version, and let's go to the watch list. So the watch list on the left-hand side, if I click on this drop-down, which is going to open up to personal watch list, okay? Click on the drop-down, personal, and you're going to see that if I come over here to my personal list that I made, there's Les's lit, Les's watch list right there. We have the two tickers in there that he secretly gave us 
in the chat, hypothetically. Yeah, they are. So that's what I was kind of saying is when we make a watch list, when we send the order, et cetera, they, whether we use the web-based version or the desktop-based version, it comes over immediately. Now, do not jump to the conclusion that, for example, that you know there's no way to save the studies on the chart and that it mimics on the desktop. I'm going to be the first one to tell you, I do not know everything. Okay, now, large part, I probably do. But <laughs> I'm not saying that it doesn't do that. Uh, but Ken Rose is also in the chat, who is a coach as well. And for example, Ken, if you know a way to do that, let's uh, let us know, and then we could also uh, show that again next week when we do another demonstration as well. Uh, any other questions? Uh, yeah, maybe you could show. Uh, I know one of the features there on the desktop platform there is the uh, kind of depth or market. There is that also available on the uh, web page. Yeah. So if we go to let's let's go to what we're going to do now is if we go to, let's say, the trade. OK, so when we see depth of market, one way to see depth of market is if I brought up, let's say, uh, if I brought up, let's say, depth of market, one way we could see depth of market one way, not the only way, is to look at the bid ask spread. OK, that's one way. The other way we can see that is the depth of market would really be in the volume itself. OK. So those are two basic ways. Other ways in which we can see the depth of the market at certain prices is by going to the charts, okay, charts. And on the left-hand side, what you're going to notice is it's going to show active trader all the way over to the right. Let me zoom in so we can see that, okay, active trader. And if we go to where it says active trader, how do we see that again? Active trader right there. Click on it. What this is now going to show is it's going to show the bid size, how many contracts are coming in at different prices. Okay. And we can see that number represents the number of contracts coming at the price level of 5086. So we could see at different price levels where is that liquidity trying to come in at. What you're now going to also notice is in terms of the ask size. How many contracts are coming in at different price levels? On the right-hand side, what you're going to notice is this is going to show us at different price levels, what would be the gain or the loss? Now, we did before a trade on the micro S&P. And if we, for example, let's say got in and the, and the price went up, this is just showing what the profit would be or the loss would be given that the index goes up or down. So a lot of people say, I don't know how much I'd be up or down. Well, this is going to show you a, a tally of what, what you would be on the right-hand side, okay? So the other thing is, last thing is, we could also see if you'd like to get into level two information, okay? Or if you said, James, I'd like to see a running tally of time and sales, and also maybe the size of those trades. So some quick wins there. OK, these are three tools in which someone could actually assess depth of market and, and really also maybe the quantity in which uh, you know, the buys and sells are happening, which gives us an indication whether it's maybe more of a retail investor or an institutional investor. So, Mike, we're out of our time here today. But do we is this a one off session or are we doing yeah. this on a weekly basis to show people the tools of using TOS? Absolutely right. This is not just a one and done thing here as well, too. We're going to be having uh, these platform demonstrations, not only for Thinkorswim web, but also for Thinkorswim desktop as well, too. And we're going to be doing that once or twice a week over the next several weeks there to get our customers more acquainted with the Thinkorswim trading platforms there. So we're using the time here that we do spotlight and features here on Thursday mornings, but we'll also have some others throughout the week as well too and of course we also record these uh presentations as well too so if you go to the youtube page here as well to our education page or our trader talks page here we also have recordings of these presentations available as well too so you can watch them at your leisure so once again i do want to apologize for some of the technical issues there but i want to thank james there for his uh 
demonstration here of the thinkorswim web platform and for our viewers there for their questions as well too and like i said we have lots of great uh educational information there on our youtube channel there so definitely take a look there look at our trading calendar as well too that shows you the upcoming uh, presentations as well too so once again I want to thank everyone for joining us today as we demonstrated the think or swim web-based platform there kind of that transition over from our street smart uh, platforms as well too. And once again, everyone, thanks for joining us and have a great trading week.